Adobe Animate might sound like something only pros use, but this tutorial breaks it down step by step. Even if you've never opened the app before, you'll learn how to create smooth, interactive animations that work across websites, games, and marketing content. And near the end, there's a quick trick that can instantly make your animations look 10 times better. So if you're ready to make something that actually moves people, let's not wait. So I'm gonna hand this over right now so we can jump in immediately. When you first open the program, this is what you're going to see, and you're going to press new file in the top left-hand corner. And then similar to most Adobe programs, you're going to get this pop-up on your screen where you can set the parameters of your document. And it also provides you with a bunch of different templates you can choose from as well. We're going to go with the standard. We'll do 1920 by 1080. And then we hit create. Setting up your stage. When you open animate, the stage is what you're going to see in front of you. And this is your canvas. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure the dimensions of your stage are what you'd like them to be. And you can set the frame rate for your animation. So we're going to go over to the properties tab on the right hand side of the screen. Make sure our stage is the correct dimensions that we would like. I just set it to 1920 by 1080, which is a typical 16 by 9 video. And then for frame rate, right now it's set to 30 frames per second, but I'm going to change it to 24 frames per second, as this is standard for smooth animation. Drawing with tools and layers. There are a bunch of different tools on the left hand side of the screen that you should definitely play around with. This is a fluid brush stroke which draws like this. And then we have the regular classic brush tool, which is more rigid. We can change the color of our stroke by either double clicking on this square down here or on the right hand side of the screen under the properties tab, you can change the color and style and opacity over here as well. Make sure to keep things organized by using layers. Each object and character should have its own layer. You can see the layers at the bottom of your screen down here. And to create a new layer, we can hit this square with the box right here. And this adds different layers for us. To draw on a certain layer, I'm going to select that layer, for example, layer one, and I'm going to create a circle. You're also going to want to stay organized by naming your layers so you always know what you have where. So since I just drew a blue circle here, I'm going to name this layer circle, and then layer two, if I draw a square, I'm going to name this layer square, just so I can stay on top of everything and things don't get confusing in the long run. Creating motion tweens. Motion tweens are an easy way to animate. The first thing that we're gonna do is convert our shape to a symbol by either pressing F8 on your keyboard or right-clicking and click convert to symbol. And then you can name your symbol. I'm just going to name it circle and hit enter. Now you're going to right click on your timeline on that layer, click create motion tween, then drag your shape across the screen and the program will animate it for you. So if we play this back, we have the simplest animation made in under 30 seconds. We have our circle moving across the screen. If in the middle of our animation, we want the circle to move up in a triangle formation, we can create things called keyframes. Working with keyframes, keyframes define changes. You can press F6 to add a keyframe onto your timeline, or you can press this button right here, which will manually add it for you as well. So right here where I inserted the keyframe, in my timeline, you can see this little black dot that signifies a keyframe. Now on this frame, I could take my circle and move it up. So now if we play back the animation, I just added in a frame that I want the ball to move to the top and back down. And then the program, because we added the motion tween earlier, fills in the rest of the frames. If I want to add another frame here, make it do something crazy, I add the keyframe, move it down. And again, when you play it back, because of the motion tween, the program adds in the in-between frames. There's also a few other tools that I'd like to mention on the left-hand side of our screen in our toolbar. We have the selection tool, which is the top arrow which allows you to select your objects. And we have the free transform tool, which gives you more freedom in changing the scale and rotation of your objects. For example, keyframe one, we have the ball looking like this. 
when we get to our second keyframe I added, if I wanted to shrink down to that, I can change it to that. When we get up to the top, I want it to stretch all the way up. And then when we get back down to the bottom, I want it to squish flat. The program recognizes and remembers the different changes you added with the free transform tool. So now when we play it back, we see that our ball has made those changes in its scale throughout the animation. If you want to move around your keyframes, once you've placed them, you can click on a keyframe and drag it across your timeline, which has now extended the amount of time between our second and third keyframe. So if we play it back, the animation will look slightly different. As you can see, it took a little bit longer to grow and jump up to the top point. Okay, so now I've reset myself with a blank stage and I'm gonna show you how I would create a ball bouncing animation. So the first thing I would do is select my circle layer, grab my oval tool on the left-hand side of the screen, draw a circle on the top left-hand side of my screen, switch back to my selection tool, select my circle, convert it to a symbol, name it circle two, take my circle, right-click on the timeline, create a motion tween. Instead of having to animate every single frame, this will again do some of the in-between work for me. So I start my ball at the top and in the end, I want my ball to end up down here. But in between, I am going to have it fall this, follow this path and bounce once about here and then bounce up, go back down here up a little bit and back down. We can change the path of the motion tweens by clicking and dragging these points if we want them to be more rounded. Now, if I play back my animation, I have my first ball bouncing animation and I created it in less than a minute. Because I'm not totally satisfied with the timing and I think the ball should fall faster in the beginning, I'm going to click and drag this first keyframe, move it forward more, and change the timing of this animation. For right now, I'm satisfied, so I'm going to show you how to export this animation. So once you're done, you're going to go to File at the top of your screen, Export, and Export Video slash media, or you can choose animated GIF. But for right now, I'm going to choose export video. If you were to click ignore stage color, you would get a ball with a transparent background, which is good if you were trying to add this animation to another video. But for right now, I'm going to keep the white background on my stage, choose where I would like to save my project and name it circle test and hit export. We also can choose to export this as a GIF as well. So I'm going to go to File, Export, Export as Animated GIF. I can choose to preview what my GIF would look like on the web by pressing preview here. This brings me open to my browser and I can see my ball bouncing animation that I just created. And if you wanted to save this onto your desktop or wherever you'd like to save it, you would just press save from right here. And that's a wrap. You just learned how to create your first animation in Adobe Animate and I hope you feel confident to start creating your own graphics and animations.